Welcome to The Exchange. I'm Faisal Carmelli, and I have Ryan Holtz, host of The Ryan Holtz Show. He's going to talk about family, how to actually make it in this world. And with everything we're going through, how does he balance his family and his personal life along with his business? You want to definitely stay for that. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that button, and share this because we've got Ryan Holtz and we've got some advice for you. Let's get started. Coming up on this episode. I didn't create a podcast. I created a cause, my friend. My mom unfortunately passed when I was 13 years old. Work-life balance, complete bullshit. Here's the mistake business owners make. What is the one thing you couldn't run your business without? <laughs> the internet. <laughs> I'd be so screwed. My phone's all drenched and the floor's all wet. And... Yeah. <laughs> I love it. No entrepreneur does it by themselves. One thing that I've been asking entrepreneurs and business owners to do is learn their elevator pitch. Basically, in 30 seconds or less, tell me what you do, who you do it for, and why you do it. And we've had some ups and downs with so many different business owners trying to figure that out so they can actually have that <laughs> conversation when, they, when you get that question. Yeah. What do you do, right? So I'm going to ask you, in 30 seconds or less, Ryan, give me your elevator pitch. 30 seconds or less. Uh, I host a show that helps people become their full selves on purpose through some of the best brains in the world. I own a company that helps you get seen online uh, through ways that are not annoying and actually will cultivate relationships with your past, present, and future customers. Look at that, everybody. That, that was That's it. Clean. That was beautiful. I love that. Let's talk about when you say past, present, and future. Dive in for that for a bit more in a detail for me, just because I'm really curious when you said that, that caught my attention. What do you mean by past, present, and future when it comes to getting attention? Uh, because I feel that sometimes when we enter the marketplace through online and through social media, we don't necessarily know at that time why we're entering. And sometimes, you know, and I'm going from FAQs, you know, frequently asked questions from my clients and they're saying, hey, Ryan, I tried to hop on Instagram, you know, two years ago, or I tried to hop on LinkedIn, you know, four years ago. It just didn't work for me. And then once we start asking a series of very specific questions, we start to figure out where the breakdown was almost immediately. And the breakdown usually always happens with, they didn't have a goal. They, they didn't, they, I wanna get more business. Like, if you say that, okay, you wanna get more business, well, awesome. Like, I, I, wanna, I wanna have more money. I wanna, I don't know, I wanna do all these things. Like, it's such a blanket Ryan, statement, you, you know, you have to break there. that down. Ryan, if you just put it out there, it'll come to you, right? So just say, if, I want if you just put it, make some more money, right? That's, that's the easy way of doing it, isn't it? It is the easy way of doing it, and it's the surest way to fail immediately and miserably, because if you come into social media, and you start being that person that goes into the cocktail party and just starts whipping business cards out of your out of your coat and just just starts handing them out to everybody. Everybody in that cocktail party just starts talking about you and how annoying you are. You know, you got to go up to somebody and say, hello, how are you? Like, what's going on? You know, are you a dad? Are you a mom? So what I mean by past, uh, present and future is is simply let's reallocate your message and figure out exactly what who you want to talk to, exactly what your goals are, and then let's work towards that. Here's the mistake business owners make. They're like, well, Ryan, this is my goals. Okay, great. Keep those to yourself. Meaning, don't come out and say, I want more business today. Come be my client. No, 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 no. They don't care about your goals because they have their own life. You need to care about your own goals, but understand that you need to layer your goals with value that helps get you to your goals. So let's replace the sales tactic to the value tactic and the sales will come organically. So that's what I mean about past, present, and future. And social media is so good with the remarketing and the retargeting that you can go back into some of your past client lists. You can start showing them some content that maybe brings them back to you. Everybody's always talking about getting new business, new business, new business. But if you're on the treadmill and 99% of your business is running out the back door and you're trying to get another 1%, good luck, man. You're not gonna grow. Like that's not scalable. It will not work that way. Let's talk about you know your your upbringing. I believe uh, you 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 were raised with a single mom and so forth. Tell me a bit more about that. Um, you know it, it's it's a really interesting story. You know I was born in 1984, kind of the glory years of the Edmonton Oilers. I don't really remember too too much because I was just a little little taught at the time. But uh, you know we grew up very humble beginnings. My mom was actually a fantastic businesswoman. You know earlier on in her life she was a banker. My mom unfortunately passed when I was 13 years old. 
Um, and it really kind of set a trajectory for me really having to create something from nothing. You know, I didn't have a trust fund set up or anything like that where, you know, there was generational wealth. It was really, Ryan, you're 13 years old. You have another sibling. You need to just make this work. And you still got to go to school. Uh, football was a huge, huge cornerstone of my life because it kind of brought me from that teenage years up until, you know, my early 20s. And it gave me that sense of foundation. And I tell people all the time, you know, essentially my coaches and teachers were, became my parents because, you know, they kind of guided me and, you know, try to keep me on a, a good direction. But quite frankly, I was too damn tired to get in trouble because, you know, when you're doing two practices a day and all that, you know, the rest was history. Um, but entrepreneurship, you know, was definitely not sexy then. I mean, it was you were told in school to pick a program, stay in your lane and and go after it. And for me, I just couldn't subscribe to that. I didn't see anything in that, you know, university prospectus that I liked. You know, I remember my mom always said, hey, Ryan, you're going to become either a business person or you're going to become one of the best lawyers the world's ever seen because all you like to do is argue and you can substantiate your points. And, it, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting because she wasn't far off from that. But, you know, my goal and my motivation was never to start a business to make lots of money. I just wanted to have the flexibility over my time and do work that matters. And that is kind of what brought me to, to where I am today. How did you choose what kind of businesses to start? Like, How did you get into that, that starting part, part of, the, of the business? The first company I started was at 24 years old. I had no money, but uh, you know, I actually just started with this little crappy Dell computer and I started a company called Q Digital Design, which was an online marketing and video production company. And it was interesting because in Alberta here, as you know, I mean, when, when the oil was good and when it goes up and down, when the oil's good, it's really good here. There's so much money flowing around here that you really don't know what to do with it. And at that time, you know, I was, I was actually quite fortunate enough where I started doing these health and safety videos for some of these oil companies. And I figured out really quickly that I'm like, wait a sec, they spend a lot of money on their health and safety program. So, it, you know, they started documenting when they were inserting rigs into the ground via video. So literally I could be in Edmonton and I get a call at like 1130 at night. That's like, hey man, I, I need you to get up here to Fort Mac as soon as you can. We need some video, we need this now. So if you like, I would, I literally would literally hop in the vehicle at like one in the morning to try to get there first thing in the morning. It was completely brutal, but I'm like, Ryan, you gotta do what you gotta do here. You gotta get this going and you gotta make a name. Fast forward, <laughs> one of the QHSE managers, she said, hey, you do video, my daughter's getting married. And I'm like, okay, what does that have to do with kind of what we're doing? She's like, could you video our, you know, her wedding? And so I said, I will attempt it, but you will sign a contract that says if I mess this up, like I am not being held liable for that. Yeah. And so we started doing these weddings and fast forward, I grew the company for three years, sold it at 27. I started this uh, job as a marketing internet director at a dealership here in Spruce Grove. The work that we did in eight months got featured alongside Barack Obama by Twitter. And then that put me on a complete trajectory of just massive publications. Left the dealership at a year and said, I'm gonna go start my own marketing company. And now I'm talking to you. For you, when did you decide to start creating content? Cause I think that's very innovative because a lot of people, your, count, your cohorts or counterparts in your industry, a lot of them are very sleepy, very yeah. sleepy. They're not doing yeah. any content. Yeah, so uh, 11 years ago, my business partner and I actually had started our, our first podcast with the Chorus Radio Network. So we okay. started there. Um, so a yeah. live radio, I do, I do TV hits every morning, sort of my business partner with CTV. And we knew that that's gonna build brand, but it's also gonna give us the connection to what's happening out there. So we knew that that mm. was the content. What we realized uh, a few years later is that if you're not on TV at the time that we're there, or you're not listening to radio at the time that we're live, you miss some of the most important parts that we have. So. Let's harbor yes. this information, let's send it out. And so we slowly started to build that. And then this whole piece that we're doing right now, Ryan, has been my passion to help everybody else. I, I, I work with a certain demographic, but when it comes to business owners, which I'm one of them, I think a lot of business owners are very good at their craft, but they're not very good at business. Mm. And so we need to help give that guidance to say, hey, there's more than just being good at what you do. If that's the skill. Mm. But you got to be able to have that that surrounding ability to push that skill into profitability, into a lifestyle, into what you're trying to accomplish. Those are the things. And that's why I'm really passionate about the business side. This part of the show, I want to call it rapid fire. I got a bunch of questions I'm going to ask you and literally just spit them out answer by answer. And if you want to dig into some of them, we might. But uh, I want to bring on this rapid fire piece. So I got a, I got a 
few little questions written down here. Sure, that's fun. If there was one part of your as a business owner that you would never want to do again, what would it be? Oh, you know, man, it's I still do it, but it's it's creating processes and systems. Like what I really realized about being a business owner is I am very, I'm freestyle, but I'm focused freestyle. Like I'm somebody that literally has to, I'll act on an idea and then I have to go back and clean up the mess because I went at it so quick, which I'm totally okay with because I, I, I always say go forward, not side to side. But man, coming back, it's, you know, those systems and processes, full disclosure, I just can't stand it, but I have to do it. All right, who's your number one inspiration? Oh, you know, honestly, it's it's literally my mom and and my wife my wife is truly an amazing human she's a complete ass kicker i'm so happy to always be with somebody that makes you want to be better if there's one book that business owners should be reading right now which one should it be never split the difference by mr fbi negotiator chris voss unbelievable negotiator book unbelievable what is the one thing you couldn't run your business without? <laughs> the internet. <laughs> I'd be so screwed. I'd be so, I'd be done. I'd be done. Who's been your favorite podcast guest? Great question. Oh man, I I just, I don't really have, I mean, I, I love marketing. I, you know, it's kind of in my DNA. I really love marketing. Seth Godin was always been a godfather of marketing for me. And the reason I say that is Seth Godin is not some snake oil salesperson. He is the real deal when it comes to attention and marketing and value. He's just a complete scholar and a practitioner of marketing. And for him to come on the show and just some of the conversation we had in and around the podcast, you know, when people present themselves along your journey and just kind of say yo man like keep going just keep going and it's somebody that you really respect you just kind of walk away like you just, it just made your year so seth golden definitely number one for me hardest part of your job today really balancing everything with you know i i'm not a new father but i'm you know for, my son is four years old so i still consider myself a newish father I just love my kids so much and the whole business and everything I'm doing is for my kids. So I'm literally just making sure that I'm allocating, you know, proper time with business and with family and making sure that I never lose sight of that because it's something that I hold so cherishly. Favorite app on your phone right now? Evernote, Evernote. Yeah. Tell me more about yes. that. Evernote is a notes app on steroids. I run a lot of my internal communications with staff on Evernote. I create processes on Evernote and then kind of, you know, rough draft them in and then, you know, write them out and get them cleaned up. Uh, but Evernote is my go-to app. Uh, a little hack I'd love to give your audience too, is that as business owners and entrepreneurs and just people who are consistently trying to reach to new phases and heights and levels, have a folder in your notes app that says brain relief. And I, I don't care if you have an idea on the subway or you're on the toilet, or you're talking to somebody, if it's an idea, start writing them down in this folder. I don't care if it doesn't even make sense when you reread it, it will help your brain to work as a Google search engine to go in and be like, oh my God, that's right, I talked about that last night. Write everything down, go back and clean it up and read it every single day. That's an interesting point because my, a lot of my thoughts that I do are in the shower. So I, I, I uh, literally <laughs> hopped out of the shower put things on my phone, hop back in, and I come back after my shower, my phone's all drenched and the floor's all wet. And yeah. <laughs> Yo, no, I, I appreciate you adding that because now you're being a human. See, this is what I like because the back end is not pretty. Like, it's not no. pretty. You know this. It's not, we, we, get, we get dressed up and shave or do our thing and, you know, present ourselves in a way. But, how, I mean, you know, half the time you might be crying under your desk because you just don't know what the heck is going on. This is not for the faint of heart. What, what's the one thing you wish you could do more of? Creating systems and processes, uh, just doing cleanup, just auditing, just getting everything kind of nice and tight. Again, it kind of goes back to the time thing where, you know, the more, you know, automated I can make something or the more clean I can make something, it means I can get a little bit more time on the back end. So I've consistently, I've been really hacking on my head and really hard on myself the last, you know, 12 months because I'm like, Ryan, you gotta, you know, come on, man, you want to play at a, you want to play at one of the biggest levels of life. You need to, you need to make sure that everything is acting accordingly. So when I have that goal, I need to make sure that whatever comes out of my mouth, my actions are backing that up. Ryan, what's one piece of advice that you've been given that you call bullshit? Oh, work-life balance, complete bullshit, complete okay, bullshit. Tell me about that because I hear that a lot. So yeah, work-life balance is, is for people that aren't doing shit, period. Because 
when you're doing something, I'm not even kidding you. And, I, and I'm, and I'm going to speak at, uh, from the dad and the father perspective. And I don't by no means want anybody listening to the show to think that because you're not a dad or you're not a mom or you're not a parent that this is, you know, I'm not saying it from that perspective. I'm saying it from the perspective of I've literally been like, okay, I got to do this interview and I'm literally changing a diaper like like two seconds before right and i'm like nobody gave me a textbook on how to balance this right now it my my child is saying you need to change my butt and you also need to be on this interview how do you do that it's not pretty so i don't think there's work-life balance because life it never gives you opportunities when it's convenient think about every single opportunity you've ever been given or or has or has presented themselves they usually come in times where you're like Oh my God, I just got out of the gym and I'm, I'm talking to that one person I always wanted to talk to and I look like complete and I'm literally sweating all over this guy's face right now. This is terrible. Or, you know, you get a call and you're, you know, maybe you have kids or there's some big problem that just got put on your plate that you didn't even know was going to happen that day. There's no balance in that. You just simply say, okay, here's the problem. I need to find a solution and we need to get this done. And it doesn't look pretty, but you get it done at the end of the day. So I feel you know, that right. the work-life balance. I totally agree with you. That work-life balance thing, I think, is is not accurate at all. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Just last night, like it, literally, I you work all day. You're in meeting after meeting. You're you're you got to do some media pieces there. Then in between media pieces, I got to cook dinner, have dinner ready, and then my eldest daughter has to do jujitsu. So I'm literally her sparring partner. Then in between that, I'm doing another <laughs> conversation with my business partner. Then I'm going back and watching Les Miserables with my youngest daughter while at the same time. <laughs> documents on for my for my business and I, there's no such thing as you know balance and i understand time structure equals time freedom but that's where the yeah. structure comes into play it's not it's not a balance it's integrated it's just life i like using the term lifestyle rather than work-life balance to me work-life balance is so it's cold like it, it feels cold to me and i i like warmth so what i like going with is I like to do everything kind of on the 24 hour level and then a 30 day level, meaning I take these slots in the day and I say, okay, what is the non-negotiables? Okay. During this time. Okay. I want to go to sleep. I want to have some quiet time with my wife, my kids. Okay. Non-negotiable. And a lot of the time it happens because I said, okay, this is it. But I always know in the back of my head that Ryan, should anything happen, just know that you are capable of getting through this and it's going to be okay at the end of the day. So what you told me about your, your evening yesterday and your day yesterday, I love it. I mean, this is what you signed up for, man. You know, you Absolutely. signed up for this and yeah. like we have one life, my man, and our time is uh, something we're never getting back. I totally agree. <laughs> um, there's one thing that you would want your children to keep the same way you're doing your business today when they have theirs. What would it be? Honestly, try not to be motivated by money. Don't let the money guide the business. Don't. And for all you accountants out there, I know you're going to persecute me for this, for the balance sheet and, you know, debits and credits and all that. But don't let your accountant dictate your business in every single situation. Sometimes it might not look the best on on paper, but you might be pursuing something that you have no idea the fruits of your labor is going to happen down the road and not everything is about dollars and cents. Of course, capital is the is the the lifeblood and feel of a business. If you're not generating money, you will not sustain a business. However, try to maybe lower your lifestyle. Maybe you don't need to go buy that new car. Maybe you don't need that new phone. Maybe you don't need that new piece of equipment. Maybe you could stop the Starbucks run, you know, every day on the way to work and make yourself a coffee and save five bucks. Like look at how you can be as nimble as possible so that you don't always have to pinch on your business. That would be the one thing I would teach my kids. Welcome to another episode of the Reinhold Show podcast, Canada's number one black hosted podcast. You have the Reinhold Show and you've got a whole bunch of interesting guests on your show and you've got a big reach. A lot of people want to have a show and have this big reach and so forth. How did you do it? How did you get to that reach where you're getting A-list individuals coming on your show and able to reach enough people where they actually can get impact from watching what you're delivering? I took the 13 year old little boy that lost his mom and I started talking about the victimization in which it put it on to myself. Meaning I took the hurt, I took the pain, I took the just complete humility and humanity of, of going through something like that. And I, listen, this is not glamorous, my friend. I, I went through some very 
very dark times. I don't know your personal story or with your parents or, or whatnot, but just imagine not having any parents at 13 years old, man. And this is, you're going through an incremental time of your life. This was hell on earth. I used to tell people, have you ever lived a third world life in a first world country? So we, we talk about immigration and how we, you know parents come over with no money and create all these different successes. But imagine you live in Canada and you're living a third world life. It's humiliating sometimes, you know? And I learned this art of understanding, you know, how to, you know, if I got one pair of shoes, I clean those pair of shoes with a toothbrush, man. Like you would never know that Ryan was broke because I really learned how to just take care of my stuff and make the most of what I had. But to kind of answer your question, the so many of the skills that I learned through some of the pain that I kind of felt has really helped it, me in business, but it's helped me attract other people. So, you know, I've gotten guests on from really, really odd ways where, you know, I'm sending a video message and if I hear them talk about, you know, Kevin O'Leary, for example, is Shark Tank. You know, he talks about the incremental moment where his boss said, you go pick up that crap off the floor, otherwise you're fired. And he said, I never understood this person had this much power over me. I'm never gonna let anybody talk to me like that again. So I say, hey, Kevin, you know, I literally seen my mom passed away in front of me. I would love for you to come on the Reinhold Show podcast. And I just really wanna talk to you human to human. I know I'm gonna start, you know, getting onto a, a little bit different of a side of him because I know that he has that same kind of thing inside him. When we study some of the greatest people in the world, study what really got him upset enough to get so motivated that they catapulted. So how did I do it? I didn't create a podcast. I created a cause, my friend. And the cause is this. I want people when they listen to our show to truly walk away feeling inspired to live their full selves on purpose and not give a crap about what anybody thinks. You're a speaker. You have your show, you have your consultancy yep. business. I'm interested in how you put that together. Is it all, all in one or is it all separated businesses? Well, you have Reinholds Marketing, which is kind of the flagship, you know, and that's kind of the company that we do a lot of automotive and real estate stuff with on the marketing side, branding side. And then you have the Reinholds Show podcast that, you know, I did 10 episodes and I kind of let it sit. Then my wife, my co-CEO, founder of children, founder of business life, my best friend says, hey man, you got the show, you're on episode 10. Are you gonna do this or are you not gonna do this? Because don't, you know, don't make this a mockery of your name. Like you're letting this thing sit at episode 10. And I said, that's a great question. And I, I need to decide, am I gonna go through with this? And I decided to go through with it. So the growth we've had essentially is only in the last maybe 12 to 14 months where I said, okay, you know, I'm, I'm gonna start watering the show a little bit and really pushing it out. But I said, I wanna have a place where Ryan can really be himself. Like really showcase, say the things I wanna say, um, be very honest. Like I love academia, I do. I mean, I didn't like it when I was in school, but I read so many books now, like I love learning. But what I love about learning is, if you can know a subject matter so good that you can break it down in such layman's terms where people are like, yo, I get that, that makes total sense. I love doing that on our show. Can you speak a little bit about what life and death means for you? Your father, uh, you lost him at 10 years old. I lost my mom at 13 years old. I wanna talk about currency, but not in the way of finances. I wanna talk about cultural currency. When I started it three years ago, and then you know, if we compare it to the last 12 to 14 months, it was a passion project. And now it's not a passion project anymore. You know, it is a business. We have advertisers that want to come on the show. We have, you know, the show uh, bringing us leads for the agency and things like that. And, you know, I've really taken this show and, and kind of give it the respect that it deserves as a business. But I want to have it as a business, but I don't want to have it as such a business that I, I lose that kind of real and that passion aspect of the show. Because you know, I think the unicorn for our show is, is the ability to really bring on these amazing people, but also talk about subjects that people are like, you know, the mainstream media is not talking about that, or they're not really diving into that guest the way they should, or they're not asking these A-list people the same 15 questions that everybody gets on the interview and ask them. And that's what kind of makes the magic of it. So I don't have a fancy answer for you. We're kind of trying to figure out along the way of just trying to keep everything clean, but we're definitely uh, kind of packaging it as a, as a full deal for sure. You've got such a good reach on social media on all multiple platforms at this point in time. There are many entrepreneurs and business owners believe if they just get on, on social media, business will just come their way. They think it's like a magic bullet for them. Give them <laughs> some, some uh, let's call it the 411. Give me the 411 behind how social media actually helps and what should entrepreneurs know about utilizing social media for their brand and their business. 
they have to figure out who the heck their audience is. And, and you know, uh, that is the number one. And what I mean by that is when you create content, you need to literally create that content. Like if it's, if her name is Susan and she's between the ages of 25 to 43 and she has two children, she's happily married. They have a, you know, household income of blah, blah, blah. Like you need to create content as though you are sitting beside her, talking with her, not at her. And then after you know who you're talking to, you need to understand this one question. And if you cannot answer this one question, I frankly think you're wasting all your time with any efforts you're making on social. And the question is this, what is in it for them, right? What is in it for them? You're on my LinkedIn, you're on my social. If I come out with a post and it says, the Ryan Holt Show podcast is awesome. The Ryan Holt Show podcast is this. You're like, get out of here, man. You are annoying me. I don't want you in my feed. What the heck are you saying? But I always lead with a value tip. I always lead with something valuable that when it comes through your stream, you're like, oh, wait a second, you know? Oh, okay, that's interesting. You know, and I'm always leading with, I'm not talking at you. I'm, I'm beside you right now, you know, talking with you. And I think that business owners listening right now, you have to understand this is a long game. This is a very long game of social media. And if you look at my social media, I only have two gears as a human being. I don't do wings with the boys. I don't do, you know, gallivanting. I am a father, husband first. My family is everything. I mean, I rejig my business to make sure that I was home and I seen all my kids special moments. So this to me is number one. Then number two, it's all business after that. So when you go to my social media, you see a healthy dose of Ryan. You see a healthy dose of Ryan family you see a healthy dose of just everyday life I can't tell you how many messages I get of people saying man I, I love your stuff because I just I feel like it's so relatable I don't feel like you're operating at this skyscraper level like you're just an everyday human just like the rest of us and I am I'm just an ordinary dude trying to do extraordinary things what is it that you want your kids to learn from you Oh, great question. That's a great question. You know, I want them to learn from me that first of all, anything is possible. I mean, anything is possible, but I don't want you to become a bookworm if you can't execute on the information in which you're learning. So I have a 90, 10 rule, which means whatever I learn, if I learn one thing from you today, I'm going to immediately go and execute 90% of it right away before I learn anything else, because we can all be extremely smart, but applying that knowledge and knowing the knowledge is two very different things. So I want my kids to learn action, 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 action over everything. You can come home and you can say, mom and dad, I screwed up so bad today. And the only question we're gonna ask you is, when you screwed up, were you going 110%? If you said yes, you're gonna get our blessing. If you told me that you half stepped in this mistake, we're gonna talk about this further. So if you make a mistake, I just wanna know you went all out in it, you tried your best, you had great intentions. So the number one thing I want them to learn from me is, be graciously ferocious. How does that apply to business owners today? You know, especially with the pandemic and COVID, I think that applies to almost every aspect of business. And you know, what I'm really starting to see, especially talking to so many different business owners in so many different fields, is that they're all sharing the common problem. And, and that's, holy smokes, Ryan, we've had to completely rejig our business on the fly. We've had to, to adapt to new things. They have to kind of get the knowledge and act on it all at the same time. I mean, you, you know, you have a business, you know, you used to be able to say, okay, I'm going to get this knowledge. We're going to get some different strategies and we're going to sit around the board table and figure out a good way how to implement all this knowledge. And now everything's moving so fast that you're almost doing two meetings in one where you're saying, okay, guys, this is the new knowledge. Now, how can we apply it? And you're kind of doing it at the same time where people are like, whoa, 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 what's the process here? You're like, well, we're going to figure that out as we're talking about it because we need to get this going like yesterday. So yeah. I think that's how it applies. It helps business owners to be nimble and to really learn how to pivot really quick. All right, Ryan, top three pieces of advice you have for business owners today. Number one, uh, expect the unexpected uh, and stay lean and know that you might have to pivot at a moment's notice. Number two, I would say, please listen to your customer. Some of them are going through pain right now, you know, and I, and I've talked about this COVID very positively and cause I don't like going into the negative, but the truth is, is people have passed away and people have been financially buried. And I do not like either of the, of those things. So if you are a business owner and you've been taking money from somebody for a, a large amount of time and you do have enough money in the bank, 
maybe it's time to call your customer up and just say, hey, is there any way I could help you or your business or your situation out? Even if it's a small token, I don't care what it is, but call your customers, ask them how they're doing. Tip number two. Number three, have fun. Like create the fun. You know, a lot of people, their, their side conversations, I'll call them the digital water cooler conversations. A lot of them, they're not so positive. You know, they're kind of negative. So be the beacon of light in your situation. Be a leader. Uh, even if you had a bad day or you had a bad evening, you know, it's a new day, go work out, do some sweaty, go into the office or the workplace or in your bathroom, wherever the hell you're doing your Zoom call from and be positive, just have fun. Show up with a smile, encourage people around you that we're gonna all get through this. Uh, there's gonna be some shiny things at the end waiting for us. We're all good, have fun. That, that's my top three tips. That's fantastic. Ryan, I wanna thank you so much for, for joining me today. Uh, really, really appreciate you taking the time out for us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me, my friend. Thanks for watching The Exchange. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that button, and see you at our next conversation. Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any new video on this channel. Also, feel free to follow me on social media at Faisal Carmel.